Today we're going to be talking about LinkedIn Level Up and it involves a lot of arson. So what I want you to be thinking throughout this is what if you burned it to the ground? We're going to go over recognizing your dream life. We're going to cover shooting all over yourself. We are going to help you to pick your niche of genius and look at how you can build your personal brand on LinkedIn after you've done these things. This is not a technical presentation. This is building the foundation for building an amazing company, building an amazing brand that supports the life that you actually want. So I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment. And what I want you to do is picture the parts of your life that you love. What do they look like, smell like, feel like, taste like, sound like? Breathe it in. Now, still with your eyes closed, I want you to picture the parts of your life that you hate. What do those sound like, feel like, taste like, smell like? And if you noticed in your body, there has been a shift. When you talk about the things that you love, your chest opens up, your face relaxes. When you talk about the things that you hate, your body gets closed in. Now close your eyes again, picture those things that you hate. And what I want you to do is picture yourself striking a match, throwing it over your shoulder and burning those parts of your life that you hate to the ground. Without negative consequences, of course. You can open your eyes. Okay, so I know this may sound a little bit extreme, but I'm also known as the arsonist. So my job is to help people to burn away the parts of their life that they don't belong so that they can pivot to profitable entrepreneurship, so they can build a life that they love. And I'm going to teach you today how to be the arsonist in your own life. Most people that I know feel a bit miserable. When they look at the work that they're doing, especially entrepreneurs, they're often feeling doubt. They don't know that they're really on the right path. They don't know that they really are the expert that people think that they are. They don't know that they are really contributing to the world. And I want none of you to feel any misery. What I want you to do is be able to do the work that you love with clients that you love while earning more, working less, and unleashing massive influence into the world. Because we all want to leave a legacy. We all want to create impact. And this is what I'm going to teach you to do. This is what building your personal brand on LinkedIn is all about. And to do that, you truly have to embody the arsonist. You have to be able to get rid of things that don't work. So let me tell you how I became the arsonist. So I was laying in bed with a boyfriend and he rolls over and kisses my forehead and asks me a question that changes the course of my life. And what does your dream life look like? And what does your dream life look like? Okay, I'm feeling a little bit judged by this question because I know why he's asking it. It's because I've just had another long entrepreneurial week. I'm building my third company. I'm working 100 hours a week. I am stressed to the max, trying to change the world with what I know. And he's afraid it's going to affect my health. So I decided to give in and play along. So what does my dream life look like? Well, I imagine myself waking up in the tropics feeling the humidity on my skin, smelling fragrant flowers in the air, and seeing palm trees outside my window. My dream life looks like getting on a motorcycle in the morning and riding to the beach for a sunrise surf, then coming home and having a beautiful breakfast across from a beautiful man, and then going to work for three hours per day, earning a million dollars per year in those three hours, working with highly accomplished professionals who are trying to change the world with what they know. Then joining friends for dinner at sunset. And then when I finally get back to bed, I lay back and I think, oh, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. This is exactly what I'm meant to be doing with my life. Now, as I'm telling him this, <laughs> I'm kind of laughing to myself because I'm like, this is nothing like my current life. The current life that I'm living involves 100 hours per week. I'm addicted to serial entrepreneurship and I love it. I love the adrenaline rush. I love that people think I'm a badass because I feel like a badass when I'm doing it. And it's so disparate from this dream life that I just described to him. How would I ever leave this behind though? Well, 
That boyfriend came and went, but that question he asked me, Ange, what does your dream life look like, drilled into my brain. I would wake up in the middle of the night scratching my dry wintry skin, thinking, why am I doing this? Why am I pushing so hard? Why do I always have to be the hardest working person in the room? Why do I have to work my team under the table? Why do I have to keep building new brands? Why am I doing this when what I described as my dream life looks completely different? And it set in motion a series of observations about what people had that I wanted. And it wasn't about coveting my neighbor's goods. It wasn't about coveting my neighbor's life. It was about realizing that I had arrived at this point <laughs> because of my own choices. And if I wanted to get to that point of living my dream life, I had to make different choices. The only thing standing between me and my dream life was me and the choices I could make. So I needed to take radical responsibility. So I ended up selling one of my companies. I sold my house. I sold everything I owned. I bought a one-way flight to Nicaragua. And the next morning I woke up feeling the humidity on my skin, smelling the fragrance of flowers in the air and seeing palm trees outside my window. People on their deathbed often say, I wish I'd lived a life true to myself. I wish I'd lived the life that I wanted to live instead of living the life that everyone thought I should, or maybe that I thought I should. And by the time we reach our deathbed, it's too late. We can't undo all this time we spent living the life that we didn't want. Our life is spent. So do you want to make changes today to get to where you want to be, or are you going to keep keeping yourself held back? I want you to think, what does your dream life look like? And this dream life doesn't have to have anything to do with your current life. I want this dream life to be exactly what you want. If you could burn everything to the ground, start from scratch with no negative consequences, what would your dream life look like today? Close your eyes. And I want you to imagine in vivid detail, engaging all your senses, taste, sound, sight, smell, touch. Where are you waking up in your dream life? Who are you waking up beside in your dream life? When you get up out of bed and you walk into your kitchen and you put your hands on the countertop, what does that countertop feel like in your dream life? Who are you sitting down and having breakfast with in your dream life? When it's time to go to work, how are you getting there? riding a motorcycle? Are you walking? Are you taking the bus? Are you taking your own car? What is the work that you're doing in your dream life? Who are you working with? Do you have a team? Are they in person? Are you in a brick and mortar building? Or are you online? What kind of clients are you working with? How long are you working during the day? When you're done your work day, how much money did you make? When you open your bank account, how much money is sitting in there in your dream life? As you move into your evening, who are you spending your evening with? And as you crawl into bed and lay back and close your eyes, what is the last thought that you think before you drift into a peaceful slumber? So how does that compare to your current life? What kind of discrepancies are there between what you're living today and what you just imagined if you could burn down everything right now, rebuild it exactly that you, the way you wanted with no negative consequences? And I'd like you to take note of what is missing. What was in your dream life that isn't in your current life? And write those down, write some jot notes so you can start paying attention to the details of what you actually want that you don't have right now. And then you're gonna start finding yourself arguing about why you should stay exactly where you are today. It is our defense mechanism. It is hard to change. It is hard to move into a different life and develop ourselves into something that we aspire to be instead of what we actually have been for a long time. 
I didn't even realize I was shitting all over myself until he asked me that question. What does your dream life look like? And then when I would compare where I was today and where I want to be, I started to go, well, I should be happy being here because I'm living in Calgary. It's safe. I can walk around at night and not feel like I'm going to get mugged. I should be happy because I have amazing ambition and I'm able to realize anything I put my mind to. I should be happy because I have this grit that allows me to work on 100 hours a week. I should be happy because I live in a country that is stable. And even though all those shoulds existed, I wasn't happy. And I could let them keep me where I was, but I didn't want to be here. I wanted to be over there living my dream life. And so I want you to pay attention to the shoulds and write them down on a little piece of paper, collect them. And by the end of the week, read them, light them on fire and burn them down. Do this every week. And you will find that every week you have fewer and fewer shoulds that show up for you because the shoulds are just choices. You can choose to stay here or you can choose to go there. And it's 100% up to you, regardless of the external circumstances. Where you want to be, what you want to achieve is 100% up to you and getting there is on your back. Nobody else's. So you need to become an arsonist. You need to start getting rid of those parts of your life that are not serving you, that are not aligned with this dream life that you want. And this dream life doesn't have to be when you retire. I'm turning 43. I started living my dream life in my 40s, in my early 40s. I had just turned 40. So this isn't something that is far reaching. This is something you can have right now. So three months into moving to Nicaragua, I started to wake up with nightmares. I'd be soaking wet. My heart would be racing and I would wake up thinking, oh my gosh, someone on the team or me forgot something and our clients were going to fire us. And this kept recurring and recurring. And it started to worry me because... I started to realize I was so good at drowning in my own ambition. I was so good at pushing myself so hard and feeling like a martyr for doing it because that was my, what, ha what my habit had been. Moving countries was supposed to have cured me of this, but old Angela came back. So realize that as you start to move through these changes, you are going to feel like you get pulled back into your past. That's normal. You're probably going to feel like you get rid of something and then you build more stuff in its place. That's normal. You just need to be cognizant of it and start making different choices. So I had burned down one of my companies. I sold it before I left for Nicaragua. And then I would still end up working 100 hours a week. It was really frustrating to recognize that I was the problem. Where I lived wasn't the problem. I was the problem. And I was so distracted by the opportunities. And that is what makes entrepreneurs brilliant is we can see the opportunities and we can see the, the vision of it into the future. It's also the bane of being an entrepreneur because we get distracted by the opportunities. And I wanted to get rid of the opportunity distractions. What I really wanted was to be able to take one offer, one company and build it to a million dollars, create something that was simple. I did not want to have 14 full-time team members anymore. I hated managing people. I hated the stress of wondering, oh my gosh, is this part of the machine of the business working properly or has the wheel fallen off and I didn't even realize it. I did not like it. So I wanted to create something that was super simple. So in order to do this, I pulled out these little sticky notes that I had got from a different conference and started writing down every skill that I had that people were willing to pay me for. And I had this three foot by two foot whiteboard and I stuck them all on the board. And I sat back and looked at it and thought, well, that sure was not helpful because I had so many skills on the board. So I went for a run, went to sleep that night, woke up and these bright fluorescent sticky notes were staring at me as I opened my eyes. So I decided this chaos that I had created needed to be ordered. So I started putting the things that I loved in one corner and the things that I hated in another corner and then started ordering the things that I loved. And what came out in the wash was my niche of genius. The skills that I have an unfair natural advantage of in this world. And they were this, 
I am uniquely talented at cracking clients open, getting information out of them, getting them to show me their soul in such a way that I can organize their experience, their expertise and their passion in such a way that I can uniquely package them for the marketplace and make them stand out for exactly who they are. My second thing is I'm really good at handing people matches and helping them to safely and intentionally burn down the parts of their life that aren't working. I'm also really good at helping people to fully step into and own their niche of genius. And it's scarier than you would think because most of us are probably spending 75% of our day outside of our niche of genius. And so when you get rid of that 75% and you only have that 25% left, you're going to feel naked. And that is scary. Building a brand around something that makes you feel naked is vulnerable and you have to be fearless about it. Doesn't mean you aren't going to feel fear, but you need to act fearlessly as you do it. So looking at that, I realized <laughs> Owning a business coaching company for dentists, owning a full-blown social media agency didn't finish, fit with that zone of genius that I had. My zone of genius is empowering highly accomplished professionals to pivot to profitable entrepreneurship. So it was time for me to start another fire, light a match, throw it over my shoulder, and not just burn things down, but explode things, build a bonfire. But I wanted to do it with intention. I wanted to do it carefully so that I wouldn't get pulled back to my old life and start building things in the place of what I had gotten rid of. So let's think about what your niche of genius is. To be able to do this, what I want you to do is write out all the things that people are willing to pay you for. These may be in your current profession. This may be in your life. And I promise you, you can make a living doing anything. You can make a million dollars doing anything. I've seen it at conferences where people are just shocked at what their business is built on. And so trust me, you can do this. So write out the top 10 things that people are willing to pay you for. Then what I want you to do is take those top 10 skills, put them in order from most favorite to least favorite, and look at what your top three are. What are those top three skills? that you have a unique, unfair advantage of in this world because you're uniquely talented at it or you're uniquely passionate at it or studied at it. These are gonna comprise your niche of genius. So once you know what those three skills are, now you have to figure out how to package it and put it out there on LinkedIn or whatever platform you're going to be using. And start a bonfire and get rid of the other stuff. Get rid of that 75% of your day that is not in your niche of genius, is not what is serving you to be able to live your dream business, to be able to live your dream life. And what you'll find is what is left is easy to do. You will be able to create a simple, effective, and influential business and brand. And when you do that, you're gonna feel so much more joy. You're gonna have so much more energy. Now, after I completed my bonfire, I just had Unleashing Influence left and I started working one-on-one -on -one with clients. And what I realized was that I was running out of time. The clients that I'd always dreamed of were flooding to me. They were messaging, messaging me on LinkedIn saying, hey, I heard what you do, when can we get started? And so I started to panic because I'm like, you know what? My addiction to work is gonna come and it's gonna take me and I'm gonna end up working 100 hours a week again, which is not what I wanted. So I looked at what I could be doing to start simplifying my business even more. And what I realized was with the clients that I was working with one-on-one, -on -one, oftentimes I was saying the same thing over and over again throughout the week. So I decided I was gonna pull them together in creative community. And this is what I called the 90 day pivot accelerator. So I take professionals through this pivot, build out their business, build out their brand, build out all of their marketing, and they get to do it with other highly accomplished professionals who are on the same path. Now, the beautiful part about this was the first time I ran this, my hourly rate six times. The cohort that I'm running right now, I have 17 times my one-on-one -on -one coaching rate. So I have been exponentially able to scale my business and work fewer hours and make more impact. And this is what I teach my clients to do. I hand them a profitable entrepreneurship blueprint, and that is what I've shown you today. To be able to get to the profitability, you have to know what you want. You have to be able to build something that is simple, effective, and influential in the marketplace. But if you don't know where you want to go, if you don't know what you're passionate about, if you don't know what your zone of genius is, then you're probably going to build something that you hate, which is the worst thing 
that I could let you do. You've identified your dream life today. You've identified that you probably are shitting all over yourself and that's what's keeping you from that dream life. You have an inkling now of what your niche of genius is and this is how you're going to build your personal brand on LinkedIn. This is how you're going to build a personal brand that is lucrative on LinkedIn. I've built two companies 100% through organic tactics on LinkedIn. It is completely doable. And it allows you to do the work that you love with clients that you love while earning more, working less, and unleashing massive impact in the world. Now, if you are finding that some of what I said has kind of hit you in the gut and you want to do something about it, I would love to hop on a call. So you can book a 30 minute discovery call with me with this QR code and I'd be delighted to take a look at where you are, where you want to go and how I can help you to achieve your dream life faster.